OK, let's meet tonight's players. First up is John Richardson. John keeps all his clocks fast, so he's never late, and it works. Of course, the other reason John is never late is because John is never invited. <laughs> I was invited here. Mm, you keep turning up. <laughs> and John's teammate this evening, Jonathan Ross. Oh. <laughs> I'm dreading the intro now. In entomological terms, the name Jonathan means God has given him, and Ross means a tongue too big for his mouth. <laughs> Again from this evening, it's Sean Locke. <laughs> Sean left school with only one A level, but that didn't hold him back. What's held him back is his laziness, personality, and looks. <laughs> one of the most famous German words is Schadenfreude, which is defined as the pleasure one gets from the misfortune of others. For example, if you see someone trip over or if they lose two World Wars and one World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Mangan is the voice of Postman Pat in the new movie. The film arrived at cinemas in May, although there was no one in to collect it, so they left at the cinemas next door neighbours. <laughs> Jason's career began collecting glasses at a comedy club. One night, a comic didn't turn up, and Jason stepped in to fill the gap. It quickly became apparent that Jason was destined for bigger things, and within months, he was collecting glasses in comedy clubs up and down the country. <laughs> uh, Bill's the first person we've ever had on Cats Does Countdown who genuinely looks like he could be the winner of the real countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Susie has a regular slot on Countdown called The Origins of Words, in which she explains the derivations of well-known words and phrases. And that's just one of the boring bits of Countdown we won't be bothering with tonight. <laughs> Joe and Josh are friends in real life. Normally, when you have two good friends, there's a funny one and a good-looking one. What's happened here? <laughs> that's unfair, because everyone else just got jokes about themselves. Even when John's... It's about me. <laughs> you just... You're sort of a victim. <laughs> Rachel spends every day working out basic math sums and talking to Nick Hewer. She's living proof that blondes don't have more fun. <laughs> Legitimate words usually edited out of Countdown include arsehole, gobshite and wankers. But they're all here tonight. <laughs> uh, John has been going out with his girlfriend for over 12 months and to mark their first anniversary, her friends and family released a special video message pleading for her safe return. <laughs> Sean recently turned 51, which, as Rachel will tell you, is a no longer in your prime number. <laughs> Aww, he's adorable. <laughs> in Roman numerals, putting a bar above a number multiplies it by 1,000. Whereas in Scotland, putting a bar above something means it now also has an upstairs bar. <laughs> David describes himself as a warrior. That means there are two warriors on John's team, which I imagine they find a bit worrying. <laughs> David suffers from insomnia. Here's a tip, David. Try talking to John after the show for five minutes. That will sort you right out. <laughs> I like to. You're supposed to say something about him and his background and it stuff. He was. He was saying that I had insomnia. That's hardly a slam, is it? Before Joey agreed to be in Dictionary Corner, he only had two questions. What's a dictionary and what's a corner? <laughs> <laughs> a corner? A corner, yeah. A corner? Yeah. Well, like a triangle. <laughs> With her regular appearances on Countdown, Susie Dent is easily Britain's most exciting lexicographer. Although, let's be honest, that's the equivalent of being Britain's deadliest marshmallow. <laughs> Sean is a sex symbol, and that symbol is proceed with caution. <laughs> and joining Sean tonight is Joe Brand. <laughs> Joe used to be a psychiatric nurse, so not only will she be playing Countdown tonight, but hopefully she'll be able to diagnose whatever's wrong with John. Vic Reeves is famously half of the double act Reeves and Mortimer. If you've not seen them before, they're like Ant and Deck if Ant and Deck had discovered ketamine. <laughs> Adam currently lives in Norfolk, and if you don't know where Norfolk is, you can find it on a calendar halfway between 1940 and 1975. <laughs> Rachel is constantly confounding society's outdated sexist attitudes. First on Countdown by being a young, attractive woman who's also excellent at maths, and then on Strictly by being a young, attractive woman who's shit at dancing. <laughs> Up acting, Greg has put his day job as a teacher behind him and shown off the incredibly diverse range of characters he can play. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's head of sixth form in the in-betweeners or a member of the drama faculty in Man Down, <laughs> he can do it all. <laughs> Comic actor Miles Jupp is in huge demand at the moment, or he would be if someone was making a film about a young Boris Johnson. <laughs> Holly first appeared on TV age six in the 80s, and if you're wondering what Holly looked like age six, Holly Walsh, everyone. <laughs> I'm not saying Sean is bad at Countdown, but Sean Locke is to words and numbers what Sean Locke is to thick, lustrous hair. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it's fair to say Vic Reeves' amazing success is down to two things. Bob and Mortimer. <laughs> Rob started brushing his teeth nine years ago, and great news... <laughs> The setup. We don't even need the punchline. <laughs> Rob started brushing his teeth nine years ago, and great news, he's nearly finished. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie is a playboy and heir to the McVitie's biscuit fortune. He's described himself as a cross between Hugh Hefner and Willy Wonka. Fair enough. I've heard a few people describe him as a huge Wonka. <laughs> Rachel hosted a TV show called Memory Slam, which somewhat ironically, everyone forgot to watch. <laughs> <laughs> when, when was that on? I missed it. Memory, memory uh, I, don't, I never saw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you've got that in common with everyone else. <laughs> when he was younger, Sean spent a summer working as a goat herder in France. He has fond memories of the time, unlike the goats, who never really recovered psychologically and had to be destroyed. <laughs> it's difficult to describe Bill Bailey's look. He's basically what Bilbo Baggins would look like if he got lost on the way back from Mordor and ended up living in some bins in a Morrison's car park. <laughs> Joe might not be gifted at Countdown, but trust me, when it comes to shouting at traffic, drinking cans in the park and making people feel uncomfortable on the night bus, Joe is a natural. <laughs> in 2013, Izzy won a Sony Radio Academy Award at a ceremony attended by some of the biggest names from the last 30 years of British radio. It was held in the nonce wing of Wandsworth Prison. <laughs> the largest ever online maths competition had over a million contestants. It was like the X Factor, except literally everyone had a tragic backstory. <laughs> Jason loves musicals and has starred in The Producers and Sweeney Todd, though surprisingly, for someone who loves musical theatre so much, he's actually got five kids. <laughs> John actually reminds me of Tom Cruise, mainly because he reminds me of Dustin Hoffman in Rain Man, which reminds me of Tom Cruise. <laughs> when he was growing up, Australian Sam wanted to be a vet and worked in a zoo. It's a shame that he didn't keep it up. There is a gap in the market now for an Australian animal expert since we lost Steve Irwin and Rolf Harris. <laughs> I'm not saying Sean is tough to live with, but last year his family won a Pride of Britain award. <laughs> Miles has recently replaced Sandy Toxvig as the host of Radio 4's The News Quiz, which isn't easy. Those are some small, flat shoes to fill. In 2015, Sarah's Wikipedia page incorrectly stated she'd married John Richardson. Sarah realised the mistake when she woke up that morning to a huge pile of sympathy cards on her doormat. <laughs> Susie's been a regular fixture on Countdown since 2003. She's irreplaceable, just like Des Lynham and Carol Vorderman were. <laughs> In all the time Rachel's presented Countdown, she's only made one mistake, appearing on Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> Quotation marks were invented 300 years ago and were originally used in the sentence Happy 30th birthday, Carol Vorderman. <laughs> True fact here about Izzy, Izzy once made a five-foot-tall papier-mâché penguin in an attempt to save an ailing relationship. It's the classic story, girl meets boy, boy leaves girl, girl makes a giant papier-mâché penguin, <laughs> boy is pretty sure he made the right decision. <laughs> Richard Osman is a presenter, producer, writer and has a hidden talent. He's able to smell the blood of an Englishman. <laughs> Ashley studied classical acting at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts, an esteemed institution that's produced some of the country's most well-respected baristas. <laughs> David Doherty is nature's answer to the question, have you got something bigger than a badger but smaller than a bear? <laughs> the number 12 is often found in the human body. For example, there are 12 cranial nerves, 12 ribs, and if you come from Devon, 12 fingers and toes. <laughs> Sean is an Irish name meaning gift from God, and looking at him, I'm guessing it was a gift God bought at the last minute from the all-night garage. <laughs> in John's circle of friends, he's known as the cool one because out of all of them, he wears the thinnest cardigan. <laughs> Holly says her days at Cambridge were the most boring time of her life. Well, that's all about to change, as you're on John's team tonight. <laughs> Susie does a radio show in Oxford where she interviews local businessmen. If you're wondering, the radio station <laughs> is absolute shit. <laughs> what have you been researching recently? Insults. Can't think why. 